Welcome back, Sugar MD community, to another episode of Sugar MD dedicated to unraveling the intricacies of medical knowledge for diabetics and non diabetics alike. So, I'm a seasoned endocrinologist. I'm here to take you on a journey through a topic that hits close to home for millions managing type 2 diabetes, especially navigating the complexities of metformin. So buckle up, why? Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna dive deep again to shadows of vitamin B12 deficiency, a condition that can lead to horrible, horrible storms of serious complications, including severe neuropathy and anemia. Let's start with the foundational information, which is metformin, right? It's a medication that has become a hope for a lot of people with type 2 diabetes, every doctor prescribes it for diabetics, especially when people get diagnosed in the beginning, because, you know, insurance companies pushes that also because it's effective, yada, yada, affordable, free, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, it's tolerated by many people, but tail is not so simple for everyone. So one of the darker aspects of metformin use is it is a known impact on vitamin B12 levels. Effect that often lurks under the radar of patients and healthcare providers. Most doctors wouldn't even know that. Let's dig into the numbers. Now, high dose of metformin, especially those exceeding 1500 milligram per day, dramatically elevate the risk of vitamin B12 deficiency. Studies reveal a staggering statistic, which is up to 41% of type 2 diabetics or patients with type 2 diabetes on metformin may find themselves lacking this vital nutrient. Why? Why does this happen? Well, the story is that the metformin itself hinders the intestinal absorption of vitamin B12, also complicates matters by encouraging the certain bacteria to scavenge vitamin B12 from our bodies that further diminishes our success to get this crucial vitamin. Now, what happens when you're vitamin B12 deficient? Now, you may be asking, why should we even be concerned about vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, it's not just another vitamin. It is essential for producing red blood cells, maintaining healthy nerve function, even important for your psychology. A deficiency can unleash a cascade of serious complications. Think of anemia, neuropathy, psychiatric problems, numbness, tingling, your hands, your feet, balance problems. Why is that, right? So. B12 acts as a coenzyme, facilitating the synthesis of myelin, which is the protective sheet that encases our nerves. Now, when we face a deficiency, this critical process is disrupted, leading to demyelination, which is a condition that can severely impair sensory nerve conduction and manifest as a demyelinating disorder. Now, what happens also you have increased levels of homocysteine, which is a risk factor for heart disease as well. This is fueled by vitamin B12 deficiency. It can also wreak havoc, contributing to neurotoxic effects and neuropathy. Now, disturbingly, studies indicate that those people with B12 deficiency experience a significant increase in somatosensory central conduction time. Well, okay, you're probably like, what? Uh, it's a technical way of saying that their nerve signals are slowed down, adding yet another layer of complexity to this health situation. Now, some other symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency are, it's good to know, right? Because you know, then you can diagnose early and intervene early. But let's say you have psychological problems, depression, mood swings, irritability, in severe cases, paranoia and delusions. Now, these mental health challenges often stem from vitamins role in brain health and neurochemical function. Now, on the physical side, individuals may experience a range of alarming symptoms like fatigue, weakness frequently occur, pale skin because of the anemia, a sometimes even a painful like inflamed tongue like red like beefy tongue can be a telltale sign as well now gastrointestinal issues definitely can happen like constipation or diarrhea uh, sometimes a pronounced loss of appetite so sometimes formin patients will tell me that you know since they started metformin they have lost tremendous amount of weight normally metformin does not cause that much weight loss okay so obviously they are B12 deficient, which contributes to their loss of appetite. 
which leads to fatigue, not a good way to lose weight. So you can develop some bluish, gray, brownish nails or ha can happen as a physical indicator of the deficiency. But there are some even more serious symptoms like heart palpitations, shortness of breath can happen. And again, these all underscore the importance of monitoring B12 levels if you are on metformin. You don't have to monitor like every three months, but at least once a year. If you want to avoid the B12 deficiency, just take some B12, right? And eat this food that is high in B12. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you really want to mitigate that risk, you don't want to get B12 checked because sometimes, you know, you check the B12 insurance says, Sorry, this is not indicated. We don't think it is indicated. Who are you? Who the hell are you? You know, I'm the doctor. No, we don't know about that. You know, just not proven enough. It's experimental. And yada, yada. The insurance companies are driving me nuts every day. So sometimes you have to say, You know what? Instead of getting my vitamin D checked and getting a $100 bill, I'll just take some vitamin D and I'll be okay, you know. So B12, you know, you can get it everywhere. Liquid form is the best form, right? So that's why we have the liquid form. What is it? Right here. So this liquid form is really good. Why? Well, because it helps the absorption. It ensures that you receive the full benefits of these nutrients. So if you go to sugarmds.com in the search section, just type B-12 or vitamin section, you will find them. So for people who don't want to take metformin because of all the side effects or they're already B12 deficient and they hate metformin, they wanted to take berberine or dehydroberberine, we have those as well on sugarmds.com for you, obviously. I'll say that adding B12 onto your regimen to metformin will help. Now, how much B12 you need, that's a different story, which we'll talk in a second. Again, proactive steps toward managing your health. It's diabetes management is not just about blood sugars, right? So your blood sugars may be perfect, but you may still feel crap. You may still have complications. So that's why we always talk about, hey, you know, take alpha lipoic acid, amphetamine, B12, all this good stuff and eat good food. It's not just lowering blood sugar. So how about foods? Well, B12, you're managing diabetes and keeping an eye on your B12 is important like we discussed, but the foods that you're eating, that you are paying attention to them as well, right? Well, some of the top choices will be this. Number one will be fatty fish, like salmon, sardines, trout. These are fantastic for B12. They are super heart healthy with omega-3 fatty acids, reduce inflammation, you name it, right? Why not? Now, meat, grass-fed beef and lamb. They're loaded with vitamin B12 and essential proteins. They're versatile enough to be enjoyed in a variety of dishes. Number three is eggs, right? free range eggs not any eggs so they will deliver a good b12 especially in the york they make super nutritious breakfast as well right we discuss about this in other videos now also dairy options like good cheese uh, good yogurt like good high quality high fat with octave cultures they're all rich in b12 of course you gotta choose low carb dairy when it comes to dairy and some people are sensitive to dairy so if you're that person maybe you can choose another food to get your b12 now, why then food alone not gonna help you necessarily always with B12? Because people normally eat all these foods and they're still B12 deficient, right? Sometimes that's just not enough to keep our B12 levels where they need to be, especially for people taking certain other medications that can cause B12 deficiency. But the biggest reason is that our bodies don't always absorb the B12. So you sometimes have to have this extra B12 coming in because you're not really absorbing it. There are some seniors there are some people with tummy troubles they have lower stomach acidity they have what we call this reduced intrinsic factor which can make it tricky to absorb the b12 goodness in the food and you know on top of that life sometimes can throw some extra demands on our way like stress pregnancy special dietary choices will boost your need for b12 that's why i always say also alpha lipoic acid benfetiamine neuropathy support we have all these things are extra vitamins not that you know they're not in the food but your body consumes them so much and you need so much antioxidants and vitamins that we recommend adding them on because it's hard to be on a low calorie diet and get all those vitamins in with high blood sugars that you're running you will be deficient in many vitamins and antioxidants as well and also cooking right sometimes you know we cook the way we cook and we're going to zap the B12 right out of our meals. If they are, for example, exposed to heat or air for too long, you will kill all the vitamin B12. So 
You should definitely include B12 rich foods in your diet, but it is a good idea to keep an eye on our levels and think about supplements as a little insurance policy to keep our B12 levels smiling. Now, how much B12, right? Well, the sugar MD B12 comes in a 5,000 microgram liquid drop. It's excellent. Why? Well, we thought about that. So first of all, the recommended daily intake for B12 is not more than 500 to 1,000 microgram, even when you are supplementing. But a single dose of 5,000 microgram can be just enough for just a once a week dosing. It's going to give you all the coverage you need for the entire week. So this approach simplifies your supplementation routine instead of like, you know, because you're probably on a bunch of different supplements as well, and maybe medications too. And then the less often you take, the better it is, right? So that's why super berberine has been so popular because you take super berberine only once a day with your dinner maybe and you're done you don't have to take like the other berberines are like you take it three four times a day embracing this once a week regimens you know can be very helpful let's talk about the best time to take b12 well if you're gonna take your b12 it's a weekly or daily take it in the morning why because it's gonna help boost your energy level it's gonna support your overall metabolic function throughout the day and take it with a meal to enhance the absorption as well and you get the best out of it what happens when b12 levels are too high in your body well that's important to ask as well it is important we have to supplement it we talked about that but for example i do not support b12 injections because they can easily cause toxicity because you know you're absorbing the entire thing with the injection that's called hypercobalaminemia it's a condition with high B12 levels in the blood. Most of the time, it happens due to injectables. And your body usually, you know, get rid of the excess vitamin B12 that comes through the food or the supplements most of the time. But if you're getting B12 IV or under your skin or some injection and your levels are too high, it may, you may develop anxiety. You may develop restlessness, skin problems like some rashes, some itchiness, and red skin can happen as well. Like I said, metformin, a lot of people are on it, no denying on that, and they're not going to stop it, most people. But you must remain vigilant about its potential impact on B12 levels. If you're currently on metformin, especially over 1500 milligram, I really urge you to get your B12 checked if you don't want to take a supplement or just start taking a supplement to avoid the problems. Visit SugarMDs.com today, and if you found this video enlightening for you, please share it with some people that you know, with friends and family, you name it, right? And... Please subscribe and spread the message. Give a thumbs up, write a comment, tell me what you think, and then we'll go from there. We'll see you in the next video, right? So for the personalized advice, always don't ignore your doctors. Don't treat yourself. Supplementation is supplementation, but some of you will need medications and testing, and that is also very important. So talk to you in the next video. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching, and this year we are announcing for 2025 january start a diabetes reversal program and we need your input so go to diabetesreversalformula.com and sign up be a thought leader give us your recommendations how to create this program so we can beat diabetes together see you later